provide a summary of sort of feedback on the session this morning. And um, and we were asked to do this in, in three categories. So one was to sort of mention five main points. The second was to mention some unanswered questions. And the third thing was to talk about actions and who's going to be responsible. So I'll talk about the first two of those because the discussion didn't really cover actions and who might be responsible. It wasn't that sort of discussion. So for me, the, um, the five main points were these, or the six main points or whatever. Uh, firstly was the diverse interpretations of the term impact, and that's, that's obviously critical because we need, to, uh, we need to know what we're talking about. We're talking about the same thing if we're going to move forward. So that was an important point. Um, USAID made an important point about the importance of progressing from donor funding of measurement and data towards national funding or, or whatever, and that, you know, private sector, government, some sort of blend of that. That was an important, uh, an important point because obviously we need to measure impact. It's going to require considerable resources. And if, if it's not clear about where those resources are going to come from, then, um, then we'll struggle. Uh, from Anna's talk, there was, um, it was interesting that the results framework that, that the Gates Foundation had, impact appeared at the very top level of the strategy, which falls into the area of indirect um, influence. So the question is, to what extent it's anticipated that that will be measured directly anyway. Uh, and so I think that's, that's an important thing, again, about, about where it is. And that tied to what Maggie said about different levels of, of of impact. So it's a broad term, and, and so we need to be quite precise about when we're talking about it. And from, from Tim's perspective, it was interesting that the mention the impacts are political and change over time. And I think that's, that's well worth, worth remembering. And Tim gave that example of, of, of how the DFID's funding strategy, the sort of objectives as far as they were concerned, were, were moving depending on the, on, on the political situation at the time. Uh, and the resulting, I mean, where we are now is with these, this age strategy with these four elements and their own indicators. Um, and an important question is for this community is how does livestock feed more broadly into the development agenda? And, um, and again, that came up a, again later on. And so I think that's, that's a critical thing for this community is to decide how livestock contributes, not just to livestock objectives, but to the to the sustainable development agenda that everybody subscribed to. And we have all these indicators and whether we, whether we like it or not, or like bits of it, that's the, that's the framework that, that people should be working towards and are working and agreed to work towards. So we need to, we need to take that on seriously. And, and Tim showed that, that publication that FAO had produced recently, which was about livestock and the SDGs. Um, and that's, um, and that's worth a look. It's it's got some good reference points. It doesn't answer all the questions, but it's it, it's a starting point. Um, and then I think it was Mario who made the important point, was it, about the the need for projects to have clearly defined impact pathways. And that's um and that's an important point. And um, but that raises a whole load of questions as far as I'm concerned. And I, I was with the CG and the, and the CRPs and so on. You know, all of the different CRPs have to come up with their impact pathways. And impact pathways have taken over from log frames. And, um, and, and just seeing the complete lack of understanding or coherence in the way that impact pathways are constructed is it's easy to say impact pathways. And we all have a sort of broad idea of what's meant. But as a, as a sort of technical mechanism for following progress of projects, it's, 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 you know, people have completely different interpretations of what people are expected to deliver directly and, and so on. So there's a vast, uh, a vast range in people's understanding and, and competency, I think, in, in developing impact pathways. And if, if we're going to use these as a tool for measuring impact, I think uh, a lot could be done to standardize and improve the way that that's done so people have a clear understanding. Um, yeah, and then there was that nice point about, uh, I think that Andy made, about the need to have projects with an embedded point uh, um, with, with, with impact taken 
uh, as embedded from, you know, to measure impact from within the beginning of the project. And, and that's and the resources then to do that. And that was uh, Andrew's point. And, and Andy also then mentioned, of course, that's not always possible. And we have to have a way of dealing with the retrospective fitting and measuring of impact from projects. And that's so often the case, of course. Hopefully it will become less and less as time goes on. But, um, but those, that's important is to try and, you know, when, when building new projects to try, and, um, to try and think about measuring impact from the outset. So those were the main points that, that I, I took away from the, from the various presentations, which of course were quite diverse, so it was difficult to synthesize that. Now, main unanswered questions, again, these, these don't, um, these weren't addressed specifically, so, so, but the sorts of questions that I sort of gathered from the discussions and the presentations. Uh, the important aspect is how do livestock contribute more broadly to development indicate, to, you know, to the 2030 development agenda. And so I think that's, um, that's, that's something that we, we need to be able to think about. And, and certainly to sell livestock to anybody, it's, it's something that's going to need to be addressed. We can't just talk about livestock for livestock's sake. It has to be its contribution to the development agenda. And it also has to be to the whole agenda, not just a specific aspect, because there are trade-offs uh, and synergies across that. And, um, and that's another thing that we'll be talking about tomorrow, I think. Um, nice point about dealing with complexity that, uh, that um, Neil made, uh, and the examples of many species, many issues, many products, and, and how to deal with the baseline. You know, you need to, there's so many other influencing factors that, that uh, so if we're measuring impact at that particular sort of level, it, it's, it's not straightforward. We need to account for all these different things. And I suppose the issue of attribution is, it comes in there as well. That needs to be dealt with. Um, how do we know when we have good data and what accuracy is needed to, to support particular decisions? A lot of decision makers will, will be happy to make a decision on some fairly rough data, but we as scientists think it all ought to be done for so many decimal places and so on. So that's again a, a, an interesting issue is what precision is needed uh, for different purposes. And um, and, and the, the feedback, the, the data demand study, should I hope address that at some level as, as to what sort of level of precision is needed by decision makers. Um, need feedback from the, um, the users of data. That was the point that, that Harriet made, I think. Uh, you know, we need to, we need, if, we, if we're responding to demand for data, we need to, we need to sort of take account of of whether, whether in fact we're, we're delivering on that or not, answering the questions that were asked. Uh, there was a very important and interesting point that was made about this gap between what funders would like and, um, and what fundees are able to provide. And I think that's, uh, that's a, useful, uh, a useful thing to think about, we think about how better to deal with uh, being transparent about that. Um, and then Jonathan's point about the serious shortfalls in the published mortality data. So I think that's that's a point that's been of interest to many of us for a long time. Great. Uh, let's give him a round of applause. That was uh, <laughs> that was a great summary of this morning's session. And these kind of summaries are going to be very useful for the, the kind of capturing of what we discussed at this meeting and the reporting. So thank you very much, Tim. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our morning. Um, we're a little bit behind schedule. We're about 15 minutes behind. So we'll have an hour for lunch. We come back at quarter to two. There should be some buggies outside to whisk you off to the poem restaurant. And hopefully lunch will be ready there. And we need to be.